a second. Let me get in the zone. Sure. Around 1998, there was a film, uh, Lost in Space. It was a remake of an old television series, very science fiction. The movie was, it had its flaws, but there was really one cool scene in it that I loved. It was a scene where Matt LeBlanc holds up this cool rifle and suddenly he turns around and all of a sudden, this really cool metal face comes over him. And I just thought that was neat. And I looked at it and I was like, they're going to make an Iron Man movie someday. This is going to be awesome. That scene really stuck with me. I really liked the design of that, that mask. I kind of got obsessed with it for a little bit. I've always been interested in uh, knights and armor. Uh, I really like the idea of, you know, the Terminator with um, an endoskeleton that's underneath flesh. And then you got the exact opposite. You've got Robocop who has, you know, like a hard exoskeleton. I thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if that character was plucked out of that movie and put into a whole new kind of idea. And so I started drawing him. It was kind of based on that design. You know, he had kind of like an armadillo type of look with uh, plates going down. I thought it would be cool if uh, maybe he was like a detective, a futuristic detective, who was, you know, solving crimes. And because, you know, he had a mask, he could kind of conceal his identity. I talked to a, uh, a comic book artist. His name was Mike Sullivan. And we started working on a, a little bit of a graphic novel for it. It was called The Visionary. Originally, that character had, he was kind of like a cross between Daredevil and Nightcrawler. He was a blind character who had line of sight teleportation. But the idea was is that if somebody had a video camera on and they were looking at a room in surveillance, the Visionary could look at that monitor and then activate something and basically go through the signals and be at that location. It was really out there. <laughs> But the character was still there, and so I started. Uh, I started thinking, well, maybe I should just. I, I have. Some, I have to have something to do with this character. I can't stop thinking about it. I need to do something with it. So I was working at a costume shop, Kansas City Costume, as a matter of fact, and uh, I got to look at all kinds of neat costumes and stuff. And I was like, you know, this is a workshop. There's some stuff here. Maybe I could build this mask. If you don't have the skills, you've got to get somebody to do that. So I found a costume designer. Her name was Bonnie Cable. She was very sweet and she took a good look at my pictures. She came back with an idea, a proposal. I commissioned her to make this mask. It was a helmet, the Iron Detective helmet. I carried that helmet around everywhere. I had it for several years. You know, I took pictures of it. I tried to use it in various other short films and it, it has a few uh, it has a few appearances and other things, but it's so obscure that you you know unless you're looking for it you wouldn't notice it. Now I've got a little bit of a costume. I need to find somebody to help me make this into a project. I met Chris Jensen on his film set Last Days, which is currently in uh, post production at this point. Chris seemed to have a really good eye for comic books, and he also had some really cool ideas for comic book characters of his own. And I was like, this is the guy I need to talk to. <laughs> I pitched him the idea, I showed him the mask, I said I have this prop, I have this idea, what can we do with it? You know, and a lot of people respond very positively to the prop, but a lot of other filmmakers weren't brave enough to go with me on the journey <laughs> to do it. But uh, Chris was, and I was impressed with his, uh, his ability to work with me on this. But I had been carrying this mask around for about seven or eight years by the time I had met Chris. It was getting pretty beat up. And there was an original concept when uh, when I first thought of him as an iron detective, I thought about having him have like a really cool shiny chrome or, you know, a polished metal finish. And while Bonnie was making the mask, she primed it white and she showed me a picture. And I was like, wait, stop. Leave it white. I love it. That looks so cool. It's kind of like, you know, Star Warsy or Stormtrooper-ish. And so it stayed white for a while. But again, as time went on, it got dirtier, it got cracked. And then, you know, I on a project that I was working on, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to repaint it. So I started making it look very tarnished and burnt and rusty. As if he was an iron detective, but uh, he was starting to get a little rusty because he's, you know, you know, doesn't have a lot of money like Tony Stark. <laughs> and uh, eventually it got to a point where it was, I actually liked the way that looked. So I put on more rust and more details. We started to come up with some really cool concepts for that. There was a problem. Uh, what was underneath all this stuff? I was talking about this with Chris, and it's like, you know, we really need to find a way to build, build a suit for this guy. 
but we decided that we needed to have somebody who was really good at that build it for us. So I talked to my previous costume designer who built the helmet and uh, she was just too busy. So it got to a point where Chris and I were working on this costume. We tried everything from Pepicura to UVA foam to uh, taking motorcycle armor and trying to, you know, possibly add pieces to it. And we just weren't satisfied. And uh, we started shopping around for somebody else that could do this because we realized that we would actually have to learn a lot more stuff than was already on our plate with the project alone. And it was just easier to say, you know what? I hired somebody to make the helmet. Now I need to hire somebody to make the costume. And then a beacon of hope lights up. A gentleman by the name of Joshua Cole gave us a call. And he said that he could build the suit. Um, and, you know, we kind of pitched the idea to him as like, we're building a character that's kind of like a cross between Robocop and uh, Rick Deckard from Blade Runner and maybe a little bit of Adam Jensen from Deus Ex. He recognized what we were trying to do, and we kind of explained to him the concept and the story, and he started coming up with all these ideas, and Chris and myself, our heads exploded, because this guy has amazing talent. He does really, really quality work, movie quality work, and that's what we wanted to get across, was that, you know, a lot of people will build their own costumes, but they're so passionate about one thing that they can't focus on the details of the costume. And that's where Hex Mortis Studios, you know, kind of saved us in a way. It's like, I can do it. This is how much it's going to cost, but I can do it. He did some designs. We liked them. And we said, all right, we're going to go with this. Hence, this is why we're having a fundraiser. <laughs> because we, we realized that, you know, we can't do this on our own. We definitely need help. And um, the costume that he is designing is going to be amazing. Um, and it will support the idea of what we're going for. He is Iron, he is Joe, and he's a detective. And he's going to kick ass in Iron City. We need your help. Uh, we would like to have uh, as many science fiction fans touched by this as possible. Thank you for listening to the Origins of Iron Joe. We'd like sharing the beginning of his story with you. Now, we'd like you to share in writing the rest of his story. Where does it go from here?